Great. All right. Well, it's great to be here, and um, thanks to the NRF for the opportunity to come and share a little bit about our research with you. So um, I am based at the Centre for Cancer Biology. Um, so this is actually an alliance uh, between SA Health, or more specifically SA Pathology, um, and ENSA, and we're in this um, building just next door. Um, so we'll be talking about CAR T cell therapy, um, just to give a little bit of introduction to this um, really new approach to, to cancer treatment. Um, T cells are a normal component of your immune system. Um, they're a cell type that circulates in your blood. And their main role really is to guard against infection. So they have the ability to uh, specifically find uh, infected um, cells and to kill those cells um, to eliminate them. Um, but actually using CAR T cell technology, we can redirect those T cells to make them seek and destroy cancer cells. And you can see on this um, electron micrograph here, um, a tumour cell here, and it's just been swarmed on by all of these T cells that have been engineered to recognise that tumour cell as something dangerous and they're therefore killing it. So how do we actually do this? Um, it's a very complex um, process and it's actually a, um, a very personalised therapy because the therapy has to meet, be made individually for every patient. Um, so what happens is some um, white blood cells are collected from the patient um, and then there's a manufacturing process that occurs in a laboratory. So the T cells are isolated um, from the blood. Um, then they are genetically engineered to give them a new gene. And this new gene encodes for the CAR molecule that's going to be on their surface. And that's their um, way of finding the tumour cells. I'll tell you a bit more about that in a sec. Um, the T cells are then grown and expanded and then reinfused back into the same patient. Okay, so this really has been a, a breakthrough in the treatment of certain forms of leukaemia, um, B cell leukaemias and lymphomas. And in fact, many patients now um, who really only had weeks or perhaps months to live, they've exhausted every other treatment option. They're now living cancer free, which is just amazing. Um, so this is Emily Whitehead, who was the very first patient to get a CAR T cell therapy. Um, she's now seven years cancer free and she's uh, running her own <laughs> foundation now to um, improve uh, research and treatments. Okay, so this is this is fantastic start, but um, really we want to replicate this success now in all sorts of other cancers and that's proving a lot more challenging. Um, and one of our focuses is becoming um, centred on glioblastoma. So you've heard lots about this from Stuart now, so I won't, won't talk too much about it, but um, it does kill around a thousand Australians every year. And really, um, there's been very little improvement in treatments um, for a very long time. And so we think we need to do something really new to actually change this story. Okay, so CAR T cell therapy is very specific. I mean, that's one of its benefits. It can actually seek and destroy the cancer cells, leaving healthy cells alone. Um, but this is also a downfall because it's very specific to the type of cancer. Um, so the cell killing activity of T cells and CAR T cells is controlled by a lock and key type mechanism. So I showed you this picture before, um, but in fact, you can think of each of these T cells as being locked up. So it can't release its, um, its cell killing molecules unless um, it is unlocked. And it's only unlocked if the cell type that it's targeting has the right sort of key. Um, so this is a, a target molecule. And the molecule targeted by CAR T cells in B cell leukemia, this is the CD19 molecule, is not present on other cancers such as glioblastoma. So we need to find a new target. And our focus is actually CAR T cells targeting a molecule called GD2. Several years ago now, we actually started a clinical trial based here in Adelaide, run out of the Royal Adelaide Hospital, um, using CAR T cells targeting the GD2 molecule um, to treat metastatic melanoma patients. Uh, we were able to successfully treat um, six patients. Successful, I say, in that uh, we were able to manufacture the T cells here in Adelaide, which is actually <laughs> an enormous feat. Uh, it's a very complex process, um, lots of regulatory approvals required. Um, so it was feasible and it was safe. So none of these patients suffered any um, detrimental effects. Unfortunately though, um, these patients didn't receive any apparent clinical benefit from the therapy. So that sent us back to the lab. Um, we've done several things now. We have altered the CAR T cell manufacturing process 
to make the CAR T cells last or survive longer. So once we give them to the patient, it's a, it's a one-off therapy, you just get one dose, um, and then we want those CAR T cells to actually persist in the blood and um, be able to go on and, and kill cancer cells as they, as they arrive. And that wasn't happening in our melanoma patients. Um, the other thing we're doing now though is um, expanding the type of patients that we're treating. So we were really interested to discover um, that although GD2 is present in melanoma, as you can see by this pink stain, it's only a small fraction of cells that have it. Um, whereas here in glioblastoma, um, they're staying brown this time instead of pink. You can see every single cell is expressing GD2, our target molecule. So we're hoping actually the CAR T cells will be um, even more effective in glioblastoma than in melanoma. So we're very excited now that we are starting to um, transition this approach into brain cancer. Uh, we have a collaboration with the Sydney Children's Hospital um, where we are going to be treating children who have diffuse midline glioma, DMG or DRPG. Um, so this is a really devastating tumour, um, pretty much absolutely untreatable. Um, so very desperate for new treatments there. Um, we're hoping to start recruiting that trial early 2021. Um, and this is also in collaboration with Stanford University who are running a parallel trial and they've already successfully or safely treated one patient. Um, then here in Adelaide at the Royal Adelaide Hospital, we are planning to um, start recruiting patients with recurrent glioblastoma, hopefully near to late 2021. Um, as far as we know, we're the only people who will be treating these patients with GD2 CAR T cells. Okay, so um, this has been a massive <laughs> um, project which has really been driven by Professor Michael Brown, um, the Director of the Cancer Clinical Trials Unit at the Royal Adelaide, um, and he also directs the Translational Oncology Lab at the CCB, which is where I'm based, um, as is Tessa. Um, so Tessa is a Cancer Council Early Career Research Fellow um, who's been really instrumental in driving the clinical side um, of this research. Um, obviously the scientists and students um, in our lab have also made a major contribution and the staff at the Cancer Clinical Trials um, Unit at the RA. And a really big thanks to our funders, um, and in particular the NRF, who have um, supported us for several years now to keep this research going. Thanks.